Hey you guys, it's Sam, and jumping right into this tutorial, I'll be using Copic markers, but you can use any alcohol-based marker brand that you have. This tutorial will be on drawing a galaxy with these markers, but specifically how to do it with a limited palette, because obviously if you look on YouTube, there's like a million tutorials on how to draw galaxies with Copic or other branded alcohol-based markers, but I wanted to really show that you can do a lot with little, and I like limited palettes too, so I'm demonstrating this tutorial using just three colors. So I'm using a blue violet, a purple or a violet, and a medium light blue. So I'm trying to use a dark medium and a light just to kind of give myself a little bit of transition between that dark dark and the light light. So just something a little bit in between and you can definitely do this with any colors that you have which is the whole idea, the premise for this is that you don't need a lot of expensive tools, you don't need a lot of tools, you can just use whatever tools you have on hand, whatever colors you have on hand. I think it just works out to have a little bit of a variety. So my darkest color is a blue-violet, then I go into violet, and then I go into blue. So just having a little bit of different colors there can be kind of nice, but just, you know, work with what you have, use what you have, definitely play around, swatch colors, test out things, have fun with it. So this is all real time and I'm starting out with my darkest color. That's just kind of how I like to work. I like to work dark to light most of the time. So I'm just using a swirling motion. I'm keeping a light hand here. I'm using the brushed end of the nib, but you can certainly use a chisel nib if you have that instead. And I'm just using lots of swirling motions. So lots of S curves, lots of C curves, that sort of thing. And I'm just staying around the edges. I'm using, uh, I'm obviously doing it in a circle here, but you can see on the screen, you can do any sort of shape that you want. So I'm focusing mostly on the darker areas. And when I come in here with my violets, I'm using the fluorescent colors, by the way, just because I feel like they have a little bit more punch. I feel like the saturated colors, can you can really have fun here with saturated colors. So I'm coming now in with the violets and just sort of going over sort of where I was, but also filling a little, in a little bit more space, just sort of bringing in that purple more into the actual galaxy itself, keeping with those S and C curve motions just filling in more space, obviously leaving some gaps for the final blue that will be going on top, which I am now coming in with. So I'm just scribbling over the whole thing and then I'll be going kind of back and forth between the colors just to sort of a little bit transition between the two. Since it's a limited palette and since you're using alcohol-based markers, there's going to be a little bit of difficulty when it comes to blending, but I found that I actually like the look better with the texture. So having in some of those swirls, those dots, S curves, C curves, that sort of thing, I think made it a little bit more interesting and when you eventually add the white for the stars too all of that together sort of hides the fact that you couldn't really transition and make things smooth and i think the end result still looks really good for just you know three markers so clearly you don't need a lot to do a lot is the whole point of this so now i'm sort of going in filling in a little bit more space with the dark colors Continuing to go with that texture and just fill in a little bit more space, get that interest going. And I'm sort of just making things up on the spot too. I'm just kind of going with the flow, but obviously have some reference photos open. I did have a tab open with some galaxy pictures just to get that inspiration going, just to kind of see how things look or what you could do. And I think that makes a big difference when you're actually going in and drawing. So you're not completely lost. You don't have to come up with everything off the top of your head. You have those references open and available to you. I also found what kind of helps blend things together is to continue to go over the colors with the lightest color. So I'm just sort of smoothly going over it, taking my time. I'm not doing really quick strokes. I'm letting the ink have time to get into that paper. Uh, Alcohol-based markers tend to be streaky if you color too fast. So if you take your time, you let things, uh, you let the ink go into the paper, you can get a smoother blend. Your color obviously ends up a little bit darker because you're using more ink. So heads up there, but here this works uh, to the advantage to add a little bit more transition between that more darker purple and then the lighter blue. So I'm actually not coloring over the entire blue section, just the more of the edges of it to get a little bit more transition. It's super subtle, but I feel like it still makes a difference and was worth doing. So now I'm setting up my acrylic paint. I'm using acrylic paint for the stars initially putting a tissue down to cover up the other artwork so I don't get any on there. Uh, but you can use whatever you have. It doesn't have to be acrylic paint. I just, it's an easy thing to grab and use. So I use uh, water to kind of water it down a little bit. And then I'm using a toothbrush, obviously not the toothbrush you're going to be brushing your teeth with ever again, but um, I just a dedicated paint messy toothbrush. And I'm using my finger to flick it off of the toothbrush onto the paper. There's a million different ways you can do this. You can use a regular brush. You can use your fingers. You know, use whatever methods work for you, but I would definitely recommend having a scrap paper or just a test sheet 
so you don't, you know, potentially mess up your artwork. You, you can obviously always draw this again. <laughs> you know, if you make a mistake, no big deal. You learn something, try again. Um, but if you want to kind of get used to the idea, if you've never done any sort of star flicking stuff before, definitely have another piece of paper or just some scraps to the side where you can do some test flicks. And sometimes like the first couple of flicks may be a little bit more like goopy or something. So you might want to do a couple off the page first and then go on the page, figure out stuff that works for you. So now I'm coming in with the Sakura white jelly roll pen. This is just a jelly roll pen that I had, or just a gel pen that I had next to me. <laughs> you can use whatever white tools you want. This is just one I happen to have nearby. And I just want to add a little bit more variety of stars and just put them kind of where I wanted to put them. The nice thing about the splattering is that you get a really natural look and uh, you can get some nice clusters. When you're doing it by hand, it tends to look less random. So having the splatter, I think, look, it gives you like an initial nice natural base and then you can add in more things manually on top if you need or want to. So that's effectively it for doing a galaxy with three markers. Very simple. Um, next up is a time lapse of using five markers. I'll have all the colors I use in the description if you've missed anything that I've said. Um, so definitely check that out. And so here we are using five markers. This was initially my plan for the video was to use five markers, but then I decided to challenge myself and go for three. So I'm using the same uh, other three colors, the blue violet, the violet and the medium light blue. But now I'm also introducing another blue and a pink color just for another splash of color, just another splash of interest. I feel like that kind of can help. So same exact techniques. This is four times speed and just you're doing the same thing, but now you have more colors. <laughs> so you can do a little bit more with whatever you want to do for your project. Um, but if you'd like to see more Copic or alcohol based marker videos from me, I'll have a link in the description and in the card. And if you just in general like to see more of this type of content, you can obviously subscribe, but I also have a Kofi page where I post tutorials and walkthroughs and art resources, including more on Copics or alcohol based markers, but I also do it on watercolor, digital art, water based markers, um, ink. Now I'm doing inks, uh, charcoal, all sorts of things. <laughs> so if you'd like to check that out, I would really appreciate it. The link is in the description. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for this. I'm just same process, going over everything, blending, adding the swirls, doing this and that, just getting all this stuff down. It's, it's something that it took uh, some repetition to get used to. So don't feel bad if you can't get it on your first try, uh, just try again. It's okay. Iteration is one of the best ways that you can learn. So definitely try this more than once. I highly recommend doing it more than once and hopefully you have fun with it. That's the primary important thing in my opinion is to have fun no matter what the end results look like. So hopefully this was helpful. Feel free to comment below any ideas for future videos or future things you'd like to see from me and definitely check out my Kofi page if you haven't already to see more from me and just support me. I'd really appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching. Here are the end results uh, from this uh, little adventure project. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.